Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy, here for the Daily Blob, where we say, you know, that looks cool and futuristic and all, but how's my back gonna feel when I get out of that damn thing? Right. I've been thinking about this, right? Uh, Tesla. Tesla has debuted their uh, robo taxi service in Austin, Texas. Right. Elon Musk, uh, the, the, the front runner in the technology arms race, is leading from behind when it comes to robo taxis. Uh, right. Uh, Waymo is uh, doing uh, what hundreds of thousands of robo taxis uh, per week or, or rides per week or whatever. And uh, oh, Elon Musk. Musk is de debuting his lame-ass little service in Austin, Texas that looks uh, glitchy as hell. Have you seen the videos? Have you seen the videos of the robo-taxis? I, I, I do believe, I do believe, right? This may be the first implementation of artificial intelligence in real-world robotics. And the problem is, is the AI might be acting like petulant teenagers. You will not tell me to drive between the lines. I'll drive wherever I want to drive, daddy. Oh my golly. You see some of those videos and you're like, wow, thank God I'm not in Austin. Thank God I don't live in Austin. They're the real video. They're real. And you're just like, oh, it is a bright, clear, sunshiny day. And those cars are doing whatever the hell those cars want to do. <laughs> But anyways, uh, one of the things when I look at Tesla and I look at the whole, uh, you know, war for robo-taxis right now is an interesting thing I've talked about for a while uh, with uh, uh, the form factor, the form factor uh, of the Teslas and how the Teslas are designed in general. So uh, I own a Ford plug-in Escape, wonderful vehicle. I also own a Model Y. It exists, right? They literally sit side by side in my driveway. When my wife is out of town, I can literally drive either vehicle. It doesn't matter because she's out of town. And here's the thing. I only ever drive the Ford Escape. And you want to know why I drive the Ford Escape? Because I feel that the Ford Escape was designed for people like me. Whereas I feel the Tesla was designed <laughs> For Elon Musk. Elon Musk determined how the Tesla should be designed and that's how it's designed. Ford, I feel like, went out and talked with some actual human beings. Uh, it's interesting, right? When I, when I sit in the, uh, the Ford Escape, visibility is much better. The mirrors? <laughs> mirrors! Mirrors are lovely things. That's one of the things with Tesla, right? Uh, Elon Musk doesn't want mirrors in cars and you can really feel that by how it just crappy the mirrors are the mirrors are just the visibility of the thing is just horrible but anyways uh you know and i've talked about this uh, many times where the uh, just the, the the fit and the finish and the comfort level and how the thing is designed i feel like ford is designed uh, for people and teslas are designed uh, for elon musk and if that's what you want that's what you want but that's where we look at Oh, the, uh, the new uh, cyber cabs or robo taxis or whatever that uh, Tesla is supposed to be uh, building uh, in the next year or so. And it's one of the things that I just find really weird. So these, these dedicated autonomous vehicles uh, that he's going to be creating, that's going to turn, turn Tesla and his $20 trillion company or some whatever garbage, right? And if you look at them, right, they're basically, they're like, a, they're like a, a reinvention of a Mazda Miata, right? If you put a lot of uh, uh, stainless steel on a Miata and made it all cyberpunky, that's basically what you get, right? It's a, a two-seater. It looks pretty low. It looks pretty sporty, which again, to Elon Musk and all the 17-year-olds out there might sound cool, but hey, 17-year-olds, yeah, you're not going to be a 17 year forever, motherfuckers. <laughs> so I've talked about it, right? You know, I've got my wrist injury from the army. I got my elbow injury from the uh, from martial arts. I got my back injury from the uh, oh from the car accident years ago. I had a pinched nerve from just getting beat in the head way too damn many times. And then here's the thing. I, I literally look at the form factor of the, the, the cyber cab or what the hell it's called. And I, li I literally, cr I literally cringe. I would not want to get into that damn thing. I, I think about it with uh, the Lexus hybrid. So years ago, right, uh, my wife's uh, Prius got eaten. <laughs> it got eaten by mice. Literally, the mice got in, and they, they, there's like the main power thing, and they ate the, 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 uh, the insulation around that. Literally totaled the Prius. Totaled a Prius. Mice totaled a Prius. Real world. Anyways, so we had to buy, we were thinking about buying a new car. We're trying to figure it out. 
So Lexus is uh, Toyota's higher end uh, car line. And so they had a, uh, a Lexus hybrid back in the day. So we're talking about 12 years ago, 10, 12 years ago. And I still remember she was really excited because she wanted like a, she wanted the hybrid, but she wanted like a nicer hybrid. And she was looking at getting a pre, a, a Lexus uh, a hybrid for herself. Man, I remember getting that thing, dude, dude. The floor, the seat of the car was like that far off the ground. Like every time you're, it was weird. It was like this hatchback. Like when you look at it, you looked at it, it looked like a eh, whatever hatchback, like maybe a sportier hatchback, but it was just a hatchback. And then you get into this thing, you're like, yeah, you don't like crawl all the way to the ground. You're like grabbing yourself to pull yourself up. Even 12 years ago, I was like, oh, this, please, please, dear, don't buy this thing. And, anyways, that's kind of what I feel like when I look at the Cyber Cab is. It seems like it seems like a vehicle that was designed for a cool factor for somebody that's stuck in the, the Blade Runner age of what cool is. Uh, and so that's why I find the uh, Zooks to be interesting. And I, I do kind of think, like, I wonder, like, going in the future, who will win? I talk about this with smartphones, right? Uh, people talk about that Steve Jobs created smartphones, and he didn't. There was something called BlackBerry. <laughs> BlackBerry existed for a decade before iPhones. <laughs> Anyways, but uh, Steve Jobs basically created a new form factor. I don't, he, he didn't want a keyboard. He didn't want this other thing. He wanted the iPhone to be how the iPhone is. And so now people think that the iPhone was literally the first smartphone. My favorite smartphone of all time was something called the Motorola Q that ran a Windows operating system uh, back in the day. But anyways, that's why I think it's uh, interesting to think about these kind of things, like form factor and that. And so with Zooks, Zooks looks like this. Oh, that's a form factor a 50-year-old can love. It's like, oh my God, look, it's nice and tough. It's a toaster on wheels. Oh, oh, you want to drive around in a robotic toaster on wheels? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The answer would be yes. Look at this thing. You look, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. It's nice and it's tall and the seats are up here. It's like, it's like your own little, little subway car on wheels that drives on normal roads. And that looks, that looks absolutely lovely. Come on, be honest, be honest. Think about that cyber cab, think about that cyber cab, and then think about this. <laughs> no matter how cool you think that cyber cab is, <laughs> you know, after some running, after some exercise, after you lost the fight with your bed, Oh my golly. Actually, now that, now that I run, now that I run a lot, I have, been, I have not been losing the fight with my bed as often. What does that mean? Uh, when I was 40, I kind of got more out of shape or whatever. And uh, again, with that, that back injury, uh, if, you don't, if you don't exercise and you don't stay in shape and you have something like a back injury, the, the muscles loosen up uh, to the point where like you're in bed and you go, what's that? And you're like, ah! <laughs> and then your back hurts all day. <laughs> Because you lost lost the fight with your bed. Anyways, right? Once, once, once you get to that point in your life, do you want a cyber cab or do you want something that looks like this? Uh, so this is interesting. So this is uh, Amazon uh, invested in this company. And um, uh, they hope to be delivering 10,000 robo-taxis annually with a new factory as they challenge Waymo. Just, just think about that for a second. Who are they challenging? Who are they challenging? <laughs> They're not challenging Tesla. They're trying to challenge Waymo because Waymo is the actual market leader. Waymo does not get a lot of uh, mentions in the media because they're not being run by a psychotic maniac like Elon Musk. They just do their business and go home at the end of the day. But anyways, so I kind of think this is interesting to be thinking about. Uh, Amazon is gearing up to make as many as 10,000 robo-taxis annually at a sprawling plant near Silicon Valley as it prepares to challenge self-driving cab leader Waymo. Tesla CEO Elon Musk is also vying to join the autonomous race. He's an also ran. Anyways, uh, the 220,000 square foot robotaxi factory announced Wednesday heralds a new phase in Amazon's push into a technological frontier that began taking shape in 2009 when Waymo was launched as a secret project within Google. Amazon began, began eyeing the market five years ago when it shelled out $1.2 billion for self-driving startup Zooks, which will be the brand behind a robotaxi service that plans to begin transporting customers in Las Vegas late this year before expanding into San Francisco next year. Zooks can see 
believe in 2014, will be trying to catch up to Waymo, which began operating robotaxis in Phoenix nearly five years ago. So think about that with uh, with uh, Elon Musk right now and the and his little robotaxi service. Waymo has been running for five years at this point. When they when they talk about when they talk about the robotaxi service being proof that you know, Tesla should be worth all of that money. They are five years behind Waymo. Um, let's see here. Waymo says it's recorded more than 10 million rides, um, uh, while other would-be rivals such as Amazon and Tesla are still fine-tuning their technology. Since moving into the former bus manufacturing factory in 2023, Zooks has transformed it into a high-tech facility where its boxy, gondola-like vehicles are put together and tested along a 21-station assembly line. For now, Zooks is only making one robotaxi per day, but by next year it hopes to be churning out three vehicles per hour once it gets the factory up to full speed and production spread over uh, two eight-hour shifts. Zooks is aiming to make 10,000 robotaxis annually in Haywood for fleet aimed at entering other major markets, including Miami, Los Angeles, and Atlanta. Quote, it's an exciting time to be heading uh, on this journey, the Zooks CEO said uh, during a Tuesday tour. Um, let's see, although Zooks will be lagging well behind, it believes it can lure passengers with vehicles that look more like carriages than cars with seating for up to four passengers. And I would completely agree. I look at a cyber cab and I look like a look at a toaster on wheels. I'll take the toaster on wheels. Zooks in, uh, is uh, planning to operate 500 to 1,000 of its robotaxis in small to medium-sized markets and about 2,000 robotaxis in major cities, according to Evans. The company says each robotaxi produced in its Hayward plant should be on the road for about five years or about 500,000 miles. I think that's gonna be the other interesting thing to be thinking about uh, with the deployment of these, uh, these autonomous vehicles, these cyber cabs. There's so much focus right now on things like Austin or Phoenix or uh, Atlanta, San Francisco, and Miami. Uh, and these are huge cities, right? These are cities with millions and millions and millions of people. Uh, but the thing is, in the United States, we're a country of 3,000 miles by 2,000 miles. There's a lot of smaller towns in there. And so I think one of the interesting things, the interesting concepts to go after, is thinking about how these kinds of vehicles can be used uh, basically in smaller environments, in things like campus environments, right? When you look at how glitch uh, the robo taxi service seems to be uh, for Tesla, and they're on main normal roads, right? That seems really damn dangerous. One of the things to consider is what if you had uh, campus facilities, right? Right? If you had, you know, a lot of uh, large universities, uh, Raleigh, Raleigh, uh, the University of North Carolina, and Raleigh is spread all over the place. Uh, one of the curious things to be thinking about is debu debuting uh, these like Zooks systems uh, for places like uh, these large college campuses, large college college campuses, large military campuses, large government facilities, uh, small towns that might be rather flat, right? You know, if you want to get tourists around, uh, you think about places like Key West, right? Key West is uh, is entirely flat. It's incredibly flat, right? Uh, the, 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 the speed limit is incredibly low. And so basically imagine uh, for the tourists, if they could just, you know, grab one of these zooks to go one mile, they go from one mile from, from here to here, from here to here, here, here to here. Think about it like as an elevator a horizontal elevator system, um, I think that could be uh, really interesting. And I would argue, you know, with these Zooks's, that that brings a, a lot more utility than what we see out of the uh, the cyber cab or even out of the the Waymo the, the Jaguars that the Waymo is using is just a normal car that's been retrofitted. And so I'll be curious to see uh, what this looks like. The other interesting thing that we're gonna have to look at is basically what do autonomous vehicles start looking like uh, once they are completely autonomous vehicles, right? So the cyber cab or the Waymo vehicle, the Jaguar, right? This is based off of what a car looks like uh, that has a normal driver. Right, a normal driver, that type of thing. It is. It does become very interesting. The idea of what do what do things like these uh, these taxis or whatever? What do they start looking like when you don't have to think about a driver? When you can literally start designing the vehicle uh, based off of the needs of the passengers uh, and not the needs of you know drivers and that type of thing. I'll be curious to see where that goes in the future. And so uh, so yeah yeah Zooks. 
Zooks, they're going to be putting out 10,000 per year. Now, again, you might be saying, well, Eli, 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 Tesla's building, I don't know, 1.5, 2 million vehicles per year. Obviously, they're going to win. I mean, this Zooks is only going to be putting out 10,000 per year. I do wonder how many autonomous taxis will actually be needed. Right, that's one of the things, like the saturation point, like one of the things with vehicles, like with the, the, one of the biggest issues with cars, especially in modern society, is that their utilization is so piss poor, right? So my wife and I, we both have cars uh, that we barely use, right? Literally many days, many days, uh, we will drive one mile to go to this little greenway where we walk Roxy, and that's basically all we use the car for. Right, many, 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 many days I will drive my car at literally sub three miles. And yet the vehicle is there, right? The, the 45, we pay $45,000 for it, we pay for the insurance, we pay for the maintenance, and the utilization is absolutely and utterly miserable. And so the thing is, is if everybody needs their own car, then you need lots and lots and lots and lots of cars. But what if you can take utilization from five or 10% of the vehicle's life to 80 or 90%? Once you're able to do that, especially if you have effective logistics and routing systems, there does become an interesting question of how many vehicles do you actually need on the road? And so even with a small number, um, small number, uh, it might, might actually, um, you know, be enough for, uh, for a lot of the, the use cases that are out there. So anyways, there we go. So what do you think about this? What do you think about this? The youngins out there, the youngins, do you wanna get into some sporty cyber cab uh, where you don't even have a place to put your groceries? Like where do you put your groceries in the cyber cab? <laughs> I'm not even trying to be an ass. Like, no, seriously, where do your fucking groceries go in the cyber cab? <laughs> Elon Musk doesn't worry about groceries. <laughs> Somebody else does that for him. Anyways, when you look at the cyber cab, does that actually make you excited for a form factor? When you look at a toaster on wheels, when you look at a Zooks, does that make you a little bit more excited? Which one do you think will win out at the end of the day? Uh, put your thoughts down below, whether it's good, whether it's bad. YouTube only cares about interactions. And with that, I'll see you all later.